Welcome back to Analog Comics. The big damn tour continues. The first three parts was all about my Dead Star cabinet, which holds most of my old collections, more European comics. And now we're finally getting close to the end and we're here with the two new cabinets. They are uh, identical cabinets and they mostly hold US comics or comics published in US by US companies, um, mostly Dark Horse and Image. These cabinets also holds the most of empty space as it was, th these came the latest, these, these shelves came the latest, so the, the Dead Star kind of exploded its contents into these. I, I got the presser out there, so there's more space there now, but there's even more space here. But it also affects how I have set up the comics here because now I have the luxury to leave them basically any way I want. So they're a bit messy. But one thing, one, one very good thing about this whole collection tour was that I was in the middle of kind of doing the setup, how, where to put the comics now. But while I've been doing this collection tour, I think I finally caught it. As I went along, I kind of came up with an idea how I'm going to set this up. But I also kind of need to rush this collection tour out of the way to be able to do that since I didn't want to touch anything before I get the tour out of the way. Otherwise, if I keep moving stuff from here to there and there to here, you might miss something and something might be shown twice. My plan is now to kind of rush through both of these cabinets, except the weird two piles behind me those I leave as a part, is it five? Yeah, part five, which will be more like collection tour slash uh, comic haul. And that will end this whole big damn tour. But I guess that's enough for the intro. And now we finally get to see the actual comics. As always, we start from the top shelf. And this one is empty. So is the other top shelf next to it. As I said, I still have the luxury of not using all the space. So I left those on the top shelf empty. As I might be the only comic channel showing you empty shelf, you can't tell that you didn't get any new experiences from this one. But now to the first shelf that actually has some contents. This first shelf is all about Hellboy and the world Mike Mignola created around Hellboy. First, we, here we have the Hellboy stories that are drawn by Mike Mignola also. And as you can see, it's mostly trade paperbacks, as that is the format I like. Some PPRD, I had to buy them in uh, omnibus format, as what Mignola does is, as he's getting close to releasing an omnibus, they don't print the trade paperbacks anymore and they just kind of vanished from the market. So I had to wait and then only the om Omnibus came out because I was too late to buy the, the trade paperbacks. I came to the series a bit late, so there was already so much stuff out there that I couldn't buy everything in one go. So I was bound to be too late on certain things. The same thing with Ape Sabian. They are in both in Omnibus format, although I think these stories here would have been available in trade paperbacks, but since I went with uh, Omnibus in the first volume, I decided to go the same here. More PPRD, more Hellboy PPRD, Lobster Johnson's. This is the last addition to my collection. I missed the uh, trade paperbacks completely. There's at least one more Omnibus volume coming out. Uh, Lobster Johnson was a surprise for me because this was these stories are the least tied into the main storyline. Even Witchfinder, which happens in timeline, it happens much, much earlier than Lobster Johnson. Even that feels more connected to the bigger PPRD Hellboy storyline. Still highly enjoyable, but that was a surprise um, detail for me. And now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Although I'm showing you all the books here, you are staring only at the one book and it's this one here. It's the Hellboy Library Edition. <laughs> it's volume six and you, you are thinking, oh, what 
is going on here? Well, I, I have an excuse for this. I, I actually made an excuse for myself when I saw these library editions coming out. And this was one of those first uh, dark horse uh, stories or series that I got into. And when I saw this library edition coming out, I wanted to have one, but I already had the trade paperbacks. But then I, uh, one of them got broken, uh, one I just lost somewhere, and that gave me an excuse to have those stories within uh, the, this format. And I fell in love with this. And this is one of the rare cases where I would like to upgrade the, the, the Hellboys here, the trade paperbacks, into a bigger format. This book is amazing. And Mike Mignola's art is such that if you buy Mike Mignola book that is two times bigger, you are getting two times better comics, basically. His art is just so good. Uh, and, and the same doesn't actually apply to PPRD. They're okay with this regular comic size, basically. They, they work really well there. You don't get anything extra by uh, having them in bigger issues. In fact, what I would do with this, I would actually buy the whole library edition series and I would keep the trade paperbacks because they are much easier to read in bed and also take with me when I'm traveling. Okay, let's go one more down. This shelf was supposed to be all about image comics as I moved these uh, away from my Dead Star cabinet. But now as you see, this is all image, but there is already Hellboy stuff coming back here to meet it. And there's two problems they will meet at some point because I know that Mike Minella will keep doing additional stories to his line and I will be buying more image comics. So obviously I need to move the image comics away from here and move this stuff to the left side. So it begins from the left and goes then to the right. The Hellboy comics I have here, they are those additional comics like Frankenstein, Rasputin, Koshe, The Deathless that are about uh, kind of um, s s those characters, deeper look at certain characters in the larger series. For me, Image Comics has had kind of two faces. On the other hand, I have collected certain series uh, fully or as they come out, like Tokyo Ghost, East of West, uh, Monstrous. It's still continuing, but I buy them as they come out. Rumble. Uh, some Copperhead, but that's something that, that I didn't want to continue after Volume 4. Isola, absolutely fabulous art. But then, I have the biggest collection of Volume 1s. It, it's uh, Paper Girls, Low, Outcast, Oblivion Song, I have two volumes. Bitterroot, Undiscovered Country, Fear Agent. There's many different stories in one, <laughs> and only one volume, like uh, The Dead Hand, Storm Dogs, God Country, Die, Near Death, Beach Planet, Dead Body Road, Sex Criminals, SFSX, Black Science, Ice Cream Man, Analog. Well, I think this is only one volume. And actually, I only keep it because it says Analog. It's an Analog comic. Invincible and I Kill Giants. How this happened is that when I make orders for comics, I usually buy few to fill some existing series that I have and then I take something that I haven't read before and something that I might be interested in. So I end up with a lot of these volume ones and I then come back later to them and to see if I want to continue any of them. And and that's what happened here, like with the East of uh East of West and Monstrous and all this. I came back to them and decided that okay this this is interesting and then I started collecting those, but these are still kind of waiting to be re-evaluated. And I'm thinking which of these I should be uh, continuing to read more. Invincible, there are three of these insanely big compendiums. I'm on the fence, but something inside me tells that I should continue with this. Okay, that's that. Then one more down. This is a bit oddball shelf also. I have a few Mang Minola stories here. In fact, these hard covers don't fit to the self above, so I might have to put them even higher. But I tried to get, in the end, all the Mike Menial stuff in the same uh, region, at least. 
Then there's a beer bottle that says analog. My friends gave me these uh, custom labeled beers when I turned 50. They printed all kind of sci-fi book covers or comic book covers. And I kept this one that says analog. And at the back they printed picture of Gandalf because many people call me Gandalf. Not because I'm old and wise, but because I'm old and my hair is all white. And here is my collection from the big two, Marvel and DC. And this is why I told that this is maybe, maybe the most memorizable collection, because you can easily remember what, what, what I have here. I'm not a big uh, superhero fan. I'm not against them. I, I would just like to know what stories are the best. There is a lot of good there. There's a lot of bad there. What they have brought out as comic books could fill this room twice. So I, I'm just a choosy, trying to be choosy here and, and cautious what I order. However, having said that, I really like The Punisher by Garth Ennis. I bought this because I like his other works and I was really happy to get this. He writes with Evil Green and he make the stories he make they you just have to laugh when you they are so over the top and it fits well the punisher character star wars is something that i love the first trilogy movie trilogy is a really sacred thing for me and i was a bit skeptical about the comics because there has been very bad ones uh, at least when i was younger but when i saw this darth vader omnibus People told me that it's pretty good. I bought it and I liked it. But I liked the Dr. Afra even more. This was a complete surprise. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, not the art so much. There, there is some really weak kind of modern art. I, th I think it's not maybe it, the art. It might be the coloring that makes it kind of 2D flat and there. But the writing was really good and the story. I really enjoyed this one. And I know this might hurt any fans of DC and Marvel as these are all mixed, but it's not like I'm going to lose something in this collection series. But Watchmen, big fan of it. This is really good. Reminds me that superhero stories can be really good and this is highly enjoyable. And then there's Silver Surfer Requiem. And I bought this because Silver Surfer is one of my favorite uh, characters from from the whole superhero genre and this was very emotional comic and I like what they did here it was a really nice story I don't know what stories are canon and what not but I did enjoy this one then there's Karnak I think I read it once didn't really care about it but it's still here then my favorite Batman stories because they're the only one Judgment on Gotham. But I first bought this because it had Judge Dredd in it and Simon Beasley on art. At the moment, this is my favorite Batman story because I only have a few more. There's Killing Choke. I have owned this since I was a kid. And then The Dark Knight Returns. Planetary, one of my favorites. Uh, I've read this many times. I didn't know anything about this and going into this. I didn't know the characters and anything. I think it was only a good thing. I like the way it's still kind of self-contained story and I can enjoy it without knowing knowing anything about anything about the characters. That's it. Then we go one more down. And as we go down the shelves become more and more empty. Here is my Warren Ellis collection and I really like his injection series and trees. Trees is something that I would love to see more. I also often read his Black Summer. The graphics in this are absolutely mind-blowing. I also like the fact that he's using a lot of different artists in his work. I am uh, vaguely aware that he has gotten himself into trouble by being a dick with too many women and he's somehow cancelled at the moment so i haven't seen anything new coming out from him and not sure how how those things go if he can be forgiven or not but at least i am i am enjoying the books i have here 
and there's lots of empty 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 space and that's the cyberpunk 2077 series i was very skeptical at the beginning of having uh, comic book adaptations of um, a, a video game but the cyberpunk world seems to be a very cool dystopia it's, it's a bit blade runnerish place and it's clearly a really nice platform where, where they can write any type of stories there like these are not linked but they're all set in the same world and it's clearly a very fertile place uh, I've, be, I've been liking these i i'd rather have them as trade paperbacks as the hard covers cost just way too much uh, it's enough to have these but i couldn't find this in soft cover so i went for it then i just have you odd ones here tarot this is a great one it's a comic book without any dialogue zero and it just works i can't help but think of uh, more views with these stories great stuff also habitat and a small one-off story kind of book that i probably come back to in uh, greater detail later okay one more down on this shelf i just have my bone trade paperbacks uh, nine of the basic series and the stupid stupid red tails that, that's all i have from the bone at the moment and then here this one i have to show it's from hook lake or Darkson. humorous black book 666 chosen so this is collected from his earlier works like best of thing this is the blackest humor you will ever see and he draws these one panels with like these thick figures and if there is anything sacred taboo he breaks them he, and well there there's few like kind of easy ones like uh, hey do you want to see pictures of my kids sure i'll just get a bucket so i can throw up in it and these are the easy jokes this book is like a test to the reader uh, i like dark humor a lot like really dark humor and I, I think this is a big thing in finland anyway and usually in scandinavian countries maybe it's the dark winters or something but uh, hook lake or ducks and you should check it out uh, e even if i like the the dark humor there are some pages here that make me wince like ooh, that that hurt I've never seen a book like this and uh, it's it's hardcover even really well pined and I know that people are buying this as a gift to their friends kind of kind of memorable thing okay then we go one more down this one I'll do without the stand just freehand as you see it's empty 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 except at the other end I have some Judge Dread comics single issues I used to read a lot of Judge Dredd when I was a teenager because I was listening to Anthrax and they loved Judge Dredd. I kind of, uh, from that I had to find out what's so good about it and now I know. I think, oh there's actually one Halo Jones from also this is, I, I it's only have volume one, I should get the other ones too but i haven't been able to find them but judge red is something that i used to have they translated into finnish albums uh, there was at least 20 or more of them i only had something like 12 first and i regret of selling them away because now i've been in the hunt of good judge dread stories and i bought this the cursed earth and it was way worse than I remembered. So if you have any 
suggestions of like bigger, longer Judge Street stories with kind of a longer story arc. I, I'd be interested in. As these old ones, they were very periodic and so the stories are only few pages long and they are become a bit repetitive in a way. But the character is so cool, there is a massive potential here. I would just need to be a bit more um, focused on it for a while. But I'll take any, if you have any hints, I'm open. Okay, that was the first cabinet. And now we move on to the next one. First here is Silage, one of my favorite science fiction comic books. I made a video about this also separately, so you can check on them. I have the Finnish version, which is called Sillage. This is the original French name, and in English it was called Wake. But if you want to know more, check the video. And here on the right, I have uh, Spiro and Fantasio. Smaller soft cover albums are the basic storyline or, or the canon. Well, they are not, uh, and in case you don't know Spiro, these are, this is not like one continuity. These are separate stories, but this series is seen as a kind of canon. And there is certain formula, uh, what and how can you do it? Uh, what, what you can write into the story this has to be has to be a bit more children friendly i had a hard time of getting over the fact that franklin stopped doing this and it took me a long time to get used to the new artist creator teams doing it but now i'm over it and enjoying the whole thing but it, it has been usually so that there's all, always a new creator team taking over they're doing some albums and as long as it works, uh, the publisher keeps them and if they're not happy then they change the new pair and they continue. But here is an exception. Uh, it's Spiro and Fantasy's new adventures. In Finland they publish them in these even bigger hard, hardcover uh, collections, I mean albums. and. Here, the idea is specifically to get a lot of different artists, writers and artists to do their take on this character. Meaning that uh, it can jump anywhere. It's the timeline doesn't matter anymore. Like here they are in Soviet Union and there's some marsupilami vipers. Now they are in the moon. I mean, it can be whatever, and that's the point. And also the writing can be more adult, I guess. Great stuff. And uh, I'm missing quite many albums because there's only three, five, seven, 12, and 17. But I have more in my reading pile be below, but still missing quite many. But it's only a good thing. These are fun thing to collect. And then we go one more down. On this shelf, there's very little to talk about as I'll go through this pile in, in the last video. But here I have Science Tales, which is this uh, kind of picture book going through different kind of lies, hoaxes and scams and kind of bringing out science uh, out there instead of just rumors and lies. This one I like a lot. Manu. Lazarnet Blast. Uh, this is in Finnish and in four parts. Hard covers all. I didn't know what to expect from this. And the ending was absolute surprise. I didn't see it coming. And yeah, there's a strange tension and tone in the whole story. I know this is something that I want to come back to later to read it again, but it, it's kind of a story that once you read it, you need at least a few years to between to read it again. At least that's, that's the way I feel about it. And then all my Andrew McLean books. Headlopper being the main thing here. This has been one of my best finds 
uh, in recent years. I found it through this apocalyptic girl he made. Really like the style. It's very his thing. But I like the writing in this. And so I jumped into Headlopper. And I was surprised that this is the type of book that I am smiling all the way through. Sometimes even laughing. And to be honest, I didn't see that coming. This is not just fun. This was funny. Really good stuff. Can't wait to get more on the series. But that was that shelf. Then we go one more down. On this shelf, I have even less to talk about as I'll go through this pile in the last video. Here I have my lock and key albums. Not all of them because I have been forcing my friends to read it. So far, all of them have loved it and it's no wonder. Such a great series. So it's one of those series that makes you go, wow. You can see that uh, the creator team has really thought it out. Then Sheriff of Babylon, another comic with a haunting atmosphere. Highly re-readable and I recommend this to anyone. And then there's one volume of The Massive. And that's all now for this shelf. That was quick. Then we go one more down. And on this shelf there's only two things. There's Jeff Lemire on the right. And then there's Greg Raka on the left. Jeff Lemire, I have the Descender and its con continuation, the Ascender. There's uh, the one-off Sentient science fiction story. And then Black Hammer. I often say that I'm not a big fan of superhero stories. Th that doesn't mean that I don't like them at all. It's just that I'm picky and Black Hammer was a surprise. I bought the first uh, trade paper back and fell in love right away. And now I'm getting everything coming out there. And as usually, I can't wait for the bigger collections. I just ordered the trade paper backs. And that, the, the thing about trade paper backs is that they give more mm, character to the one book. There's a name, it's a story arc, it's just my thing, I can't explain it any better. And then there's Gideon Falls, another try to like horror. This one I actually liked a bit more. This had a truly kind of a scary um, atmosphere in it. And, but for some reason I didn't continue it. I, I it's just I'm just very hard to get interested more in the horror and I keep trying and I keep trying. This is acrylic white paint. This is for one of my uh projects that I'm supposed to do, planning to do. I'll maybe come back to it later when I start talk about the books that I didn't talk about now. Then here is the Greg Raka collection, the old card. Really like this one. In fact, I think I'm going to be doing a closer look at these quite soon. Black Magic, also wonderful stuff. Although I heard that he might not be continuing this series. Not sure. That would be a bummer. And then Lazarus. Lazarus is really, really good. Uh, I'm missing some of the volumes as my friend. I made him read it i told him that he's going to love it and he did so now he's he's through these first two uh part covers collections and now he's reading the last ones but craig rocker as a writer for me is one of the best he makes the world building so seamless with the story there's there's it, it's just a talent in him oh wow there's one book also uh missing it's the um, what, what was it called? White Out or something. The, the first story he ever he made about uh, two stories that happened in on, on Antarctica. I, I have also loaned them that one to my friends. Okay, then we go one more down. The last two shelves, I just uh, do it by the phone in my hand. My Berserk collection, so there's more manga. This is something that I am kind of committed to. I want to see 
how it ends well i i kind of know that it doesn't cut to the end but i i want to know where it where it got the the bigger story i have only seven volumes now i think it's already in the volume 10 or 11 the whole collection mm -hmm. but i haven't ordered uh from uh, outside finland for a while i've been mostly buying from local comic book stores and that was that shelf i'm just reserving this space for more berserk then we go one more down and this is also quite empty still i only have here one trade back volume of promethea i bought this because of the jh williams the third not because alan moore i got to know this artist through sandman the overture and i was blown away absolutely blown away he is unlike anyone i just didn't get into the story of promethea and i'm wondering if it's something worth going through i might have to come back to it later it might have also been i might have read this at the wrong moment but there's so much to read and buy then there's billionaire island just one uh, off story here and at the other end on the left side is my heavy metal collection these are let's say the years this is 1993 91 92 there's some 2005 2006 2007 seems to be the last the latest so-called but i love this magazine when it came out i could buy this from the local um, newsstands full of different artist writers lots of sci-fi weird wonderful stories but at some point it started to turn to more like a nude nude pictures it, it was full of ads for all kind of well kind of pornography um stories and so on um, i mean nothing against uh women with very little clothes and so on but it's just something that i don't look for in comics that that's all and i i, I was hunting more for these uh little stories with cool ideas and concepts and i it felt a bit like turning into something else and then i stopped buying this and um, here's one of my favorites it's a special with war machine and it's a rogue trooper story a long one absolutely love it i've read this so many times that it's coming to pieces but then something else happened to heavy metal it kind of vanished and now they are trying to relaunch it and i've been trying to find more info about it, it seems that people are complaining about not getting what they are ordering and so on but yeah all of this is great stuff highly re-readable but that was all of it that was this shelf except these two piles here and i'll be going through them in the last part which is more like a comic haul and that was mostly it now i only have those few mystery piles to go through in the last video uh this was these two cabinets were clearly easier to go through the um the trade paperbacks are easier to show than the albums they're just a bit thicker so you can see what's there just by looking at them you don't have to pull everything out it just makes the whole thing easier thanks for being there and i'll see you in the last one bye